So what are the components of compact bone? What is giving the compact bone that tree ring-like appearance? It's these neighboring osteons, or these structural units. And sometimes you'll hear osteons referred to as Haversian systems, so the eponym in terms of osteons. And that's what is giving this very distinct tree ring-like appearance that you have. Now these osteons, or these structural units, are very well organized. They're gonna be organized along lines of stress. So if a certain uh, type of stress is always occurring on a bone, these osteons are going to form in such a way in order to protect or to keep the bone structurally sound. And these osteons change throughout life. You'll have the formation of new osteons, and you'll have uh, osteons break down. So they're constantly changing as part of this dynamic skeletal system. Now, if you look at a single osteon, let's talk about the components within that structural unit. You're gonna have concentric lamellae, and that, that is these, the actual ring portions of the osteon, and these are just that mineralized or that hardened extracellular matrix. And dotted within that concentric lamellae, you're gonna have the mature bone cells or the osteocytes. Now in the middle of the osteon, so if you look at a histological slide, you'll have that dark portion. That's the central canal, so you can see it uh, right here with the, the red and the blue. And anytime you see red and blue when you're looking at an anatomical illustration, you know red means artery, blue means vein, and then yellow is typically going to be the nerve. So you'll have not only the nerve, artery, and vein, you'll also have lymphatics that are going to drain areas in terms of the bone, drain lymph from the bone. Now within that extracellular matrix or within the concentric lamellae, you'll have these little holes or lacunae. Lacunae actually means a uh, lake in Latin. So you'll have, you can think of these little lakes within the concentric lamellae that are going to have osteocytes or those mature cells sitting within. So you, they're going to have these multiple ones associated with each uh, osteon. So you can see here's a close up of that. You'll have the osteocytes sitting in this lacunae or this kind of pit like region. Now, kind of extensions of these lacunae are one, one of the coolest words in an anatomy, cannuliculi. And that's these extensions of the lacunae that are allowing for these processes to sit in there. And remember, I said the osteocytes, they're still alive. They're not secreting extracellular matrix anymore. They're important in terms of communication between different osteocytes. Also allowing for exchange of nutrients, uh, the removal of waste associated with the osteon structural unit. Now, like I said, osteons are going to be dynamic. They're going to change throughout life. You'll have the formation of new osteons. You'll also have the breakdown of old osteons. And that's what this interstitial lamellae are. So you'll have these nice structurally sound uh, osteons, and then you're gonna have fragments of older osteons, which will eventually break down completely and all that waste will be removed from the bone. But you can still see these fragments of older osteons that could still have um, osteocytes within. You could still have those cannuliculi in there as well. Now, in order for neurovascular to, to get into the bone, you're gonna have these perforating or Volkmann's canals. And I really like this illustration here. You can see, obviously, that blood supply has to move into the bone, so you'll have these transverse canals that will lead into the central canal. So penetrating not only the periosteum, but also that compact bone to allow for the neurovasculature to get into the bone. And that's a really important thing I want to note here, and I want to stop here. Neurovasculature is very important in terms of allowing bone to be dynamic. If you didn't have the arterial supply that's going to supply oxygen and different nutrients to the bone, you wouldn't be able to change. So there's going to be these perforating canals throughout the entirety of the bone. And then lastly, the last part I want to discuss is the circumferential lamellae. And importantly, you'll have this along the outer edges 
of the bone. And these are almost like super uh, wide uh, um, concentric lamellae, but in terms of the entirety of the bone. Now, one thing I want to <clears throat> note here is that the periosteum, or that outer connective tissue layer, is going to be closely adhered to the circumferential lamellae. So, in fact, you're going to have uh, components of that connective tissue actually moving into the bony matrix at this concentric lamellae. Now, cir circumferential lamellae is important in terms of at positional growth. And we'll talk about this in a lot more detail. But appositional growth means growth in terms of bone width, not length, but width. And so you're going to have a lot of those uh, osteogenic cells and osteoblasts in this area for the formation of new osteons when you're having uh, growth in terms of width.